Good morning, my dear friends. I am from Bulgaria, and that is the reason I want to first of all thank Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson to give me the opportunity to park my horse and cart here in Westminster. <laughs> I'm sure that some of you know me, but I like to hear my name again and again because I'm a politician. And all the politicians, they like this one. I introduce myself yet again. My name is Swavi Binev from Bulgaria. I started life as, as a sportsman, reaching the title of European champion in Taekwondo more than 20 years ago, of course. I then become a businessman and become one of the most successful in Bulgaria. And I have five children, and I have also become a grandfather. And despite all this success, I didn't stop. Some said I was mad. But when I enter politics, I really understand what it means to be a real fighter. Since 2007, I have been a member of the European Parliament, and I guess, thanks to NATO, from uh, the beginning, from the end of 2012, I start to be a vice president and member of the Bureau of EFD Group. <laughs> which sitting together with you keep. Again, thanks to NATO. And here I am today among you at this grand political event which brings together friends, brothers and allies from across Europe. I'm glad to see people here of many different ages. This is the best compliment for the anniversary of your party. And I congratulate you on your 20th anniversary. I'm glad that the development of UKIP continues to progress. The start from this, to start from the scratch and to win millions of followers in less than 20 years, it's a remarkable achievement. And this is in a country with political parties with all traditions, such as the Labour and the Conservatives. UKIP has shattered the political status quo in the United Kingdom and has established itself a leading force at the national and European level with followers across Europe, including in my country. And as I mentioned Bulgaria, most probably you have heard about the anti-government protests in Bulgaria. I do not glorify myself, but I'm proud of the fact that exactly one year ago, along with my partners and brothers from the National Front for the Salvation of Bulgaria, NFSB in short, who are here today on the balcony, because that's the European Parliament tradition, the special guests should be there. Mr. Valery Simeonov, which is the president of the National Front of Salvation, for the Salvation of Bulgaria and also for all this alliance, we made it, and Mr. Dan Chukajir, who is the co-president. <laughs> we were the first to bring the people into the streets against the political and economic monopolies in the country. And I'm glad that with those protest, we have shown that you should not let fear rule your life. One month ago, we did something very important. We took another step forward. My party proud merged with the NFSB, and we formed a new alliance, which is the biggest hope for Bulgarian people. It is again it is gaining more and more success and more support. Our union aims to create a real eurosceptic, right-wing, patriotic coalition, able to beat the political status quo 
that has existed in Bulgaria for 24 years now. And to show people that there is an alternative. Our main goal is to work for the development of Bulgaria, to break the economic monopolies and to bring Bulgarians back to their homeland. This is our biggest mutual battle together with Nigel. Bulgarians should become wealthy tourists and not poor slaves that flee their country and become a millstone that burden the richer country like yours. <laughs> Unfortunately, Bulgaria is currently far from this position. As I already mentioned, the political scene in the country is like a theater. A theater that just changes the core. The political monopoly in the recent years created an economic one. Together they control everything in Bulgaria. They are the directors of the Bulgarian political scene. To picture the attitude of Brussels to Bulgaria, I'm going to use the following British joke. A gentleman speaking to his manservant. Charles, something in my shoes, shoe is killing me. See what it is. A stone, Sir John. And what is this stone doing in my shoe, Charles? It is killing you, Sir John. <laughs> Perhaps you understand me. The stone is the hypocrisy of Europe. But nobody wants to solve this problem. If you apply this to the European Union, I can say that it is successfully playing its role of a stepmother who is good to some and bad for the others. I will tell you something from the communist time, but implemented today by the traditional parties like EPP, the socialists and the liberals. The parties from the status quo jokingly ask the Bulgarians how they are feeling. Jokingly. The Bulgarians answer, we are feeling fine. The, I'm not going to make any comments about the future of Europe since it is still at noon. I believe that UKIP, before many others, has feel where Europe is heading. That the European Union has left the right path. It has lost many of his main values. The member states have lost their sovereignty and the administration in Brussels has started centrally to give orders without taking into consideration the differences between the member states. And I can understand why you keep it performing well, so well in the United Kingdom. Dear friends, I wish you a great success in the European election next year. I'm sure that you will come out top. <laughs> Even M Mr. Paroso seems to think so. <laughs> and he said, I was at the plenary when he see the, say this one. Together with the, my new alliance and with other Eurosceptical members, I believe that our political group and the new European Parliament will become Mainstream, why not the third largest political group, which means much more influence and in the running of the institution with important posts such as Vice President of the European Parliament and Chairmanship of the Committees and Delegation. Together we will be able to change the way in which the institution work. I also believe that UKIP will obtain seats and the mother of parliament next door in 2015. And be, <laughs> and be influential in the formation of the, your next government. And on that note, I would like to tell a final joke set in the future. A woman phones David Cameron and his mobile phone in September 2015. I would like to speak with the Prime Minister, please. 
Cameron answers, but I'm not longer prime minister. She hands up, then phones again. Can I get the prime minister, please? Cameron replies, but I already said, I'm not the prime minister anymore. She hands up, then calls again. Please, could I speak to the prime minister? Cameron getting a bit annoyed. Ma'am, I told you, I'm not longer prime minister. The lady says, I know, I know. But I just love hearing it again and again. <laughs> now, please put me to the Prime Minister Farage, please. I wish you every election success. What's going on? Okay. <laughs> I wish you every election success, which for me it's not less than first place. And I also wish you a fruitful and enjoyable conference. Thank you very much for your attention, for listening to me yet again today, or at least you very conveniently pretended to listen to me. <laughs> but also, thank you, Nigel. He is not here, but I will say him privately. God bless Bulgaria. God bless NFSB and Proud. God bless United Kingdom and the Queen. God bless you, Keep. God bless all of you and your family, and thank you very much for the attention.